What does Weird Al have to do with marketing? Yes, that's right, Tracy. I started with Weird Al and Tracy's going to help us dive into what the heck does this have to do with anything? Tracy, here's your chance to introduce yourself, why this matters to you and why it should matter to everyone else. <laughs> so like why Weird Al matters to me or why, <laughs> why oh, Weird Al is relevant to marketing matters to me. <laughs> That is a great, why Weird Al matters to you, why marketing matters to you, and why Weird Al marketing matters to you. <laughs> and also the fact that it's actually a third jump because it's Weird Al doing a parody of another thing, which creates the connection to marketing, which this is fun. <laughs> okay, so are you confused yet, folks? <laughs> okay, so are we, so don't even worry about this. We'll find our way. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am Tracy Borison. I am a digital brand experience coach. What is that? It's a thing I made up, so don't worry too much about it. But it has a lot to do with the digital experiences, which actually ties into why Weird Al is relevant in this conversation. Because when it comes to digital experiences, think things like networking, sales, marketing, activities that we're doing online. Historically, if you take these analog, all of these things were very, it was very easy to understand what each of them was. Marketing's job was to publish flyers and the flyers are going to drive people into the store. And then sales works at the store and they close deals. And networking is a thing we do socially. It was like very clear that all of these things are different things. However, in the digital environment, these lines have become Blurred lines, yeah. which is why the Weird Al <laughs> version. The, I mean, obviously, we like the Weird Al version. I appreciate the Robin Thicke version as mm -hmm. well. Of course, Robin Thicke, also one of my favorite judges on The Masked Singer. Um, <laughs> if you don't watch The Masked Singer, you probably should. It's an awesome show. Um, but yeah, this is what we're going to talk about today is, are these blurred lines and what I like to call the intersection of networking, sales, marketing, and how taking all of these things into consideration in the marketing conversation is very helpful because marketing starts a conversation, but if it doesn't go anywhere, it's not super helpful. So let's talk about it, Sean. That's right. That's, that's that. And, and so did everybody follow that path, that train of thought? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, most people don't follow the entire path my brain takes part of this it's it's my gift i was gonna say and now we've just converged paths so now we're just doing one of these and we're just figuring it out um and if you haven't heard weird al's word crimes word crimes that's where so the good seriously when did that come out i was working in corporate at the time and i remember when i heard it and i was like i just sat in my computer and listened to it over and over <laughs> Yes. And I love that it's got like everything written out on if you watch the music video, it's all written out. So you're able to like read it and see the errors. And like, it's, it's beautiful. It's <laughs> but for geeks okay. like us. It's just watch it. Watch it again. Gorgeous. You'll appreciate it again. <laughs> That's right. And of course, reflecting back on that blurred lines kind of concept. It's like, okay, so we're looking at marketing. And as I said, you're never not marketing. This is like a huge thing, which is actually a really great example of those blurred lines. Because in today's world, you're always provided with an opportunity to show up in a certain way, to brand yourself with your personal branding, your professional branding, and then put it out into the world, which is that action piece of marketing. So how then does networking differentiate itself from sales, which just the other day I was speaking to one of our guests about how the whole client journey is a system that reinforces your marketing and, and uh, what was it? And, and then the active marketing and then the actual putting yourself out there in an intentional business manner. Like, yeah. Okay. Let's just putting yourself out there in an intentional business manner. Is that not networking? I mean, I feel right? like that's another great definition of networking. Is that not another great definition of sales? It's like frontline hunting sales, right? It's just about putting yourself out there. And this is why I think these lines have become blurred so much, especially like let's use LinkedIn as, as an example. We've got a marketing team, or maybe it's just you. Maybe you put on your marketing hat and maybe you put on your sales hat and they're two different hats. Um, by the end of this episode, you won't think that that's true. Um, but let's say you've got your social media posting strategy, and that's your marketing hat, right? So I'm going to post these things on social media, create the content, post them. Okay, that's the marketing. Now I'm going to put on my sales hat, 
my sales hat doesn't care what I posted. My sales hat is just going to send a whole bunch of random connection requests to random people because that's what I'm supposed to do, right? Like I'm supposed to connect with a whole bunch of people. So now all of a sudden, even as one individual, I'm doing two activities that are not connected, but I did both of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pull this back to the intention setting that you mentioned so beautifully at the beginning, Shauna. It's like, what is my intention with this? I actually just wrote a post about this earlier today about like opening doors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marketing opens a door to a potential opportunity. A first sales conversation opens a door <laughs> to a potential first opportunity. Networking, whether that is in the virtual environment or in person at a gala event or where else you might be hanging out locally, coffee shop, who knows, right? It's the first conversation is just an opening <laughs> to where something can go. So now each of these activities actually is serving the same purpose. It's all about opening doors. So if I bring that back and I say, okay, well, I'm going to post on social media. How can that open a door? Okay, great. That's one door, right? But like I live in a house. It has it has three doors to the outside. Right? There are three different ways that the outside air can get into my house. And so if you look at that, it's like, okay, one's the front door. Maybe that's your marketing, right? One's the garage door. Maybe that's my networking. One's the back door. Maybe that's sale or maybe that's networking. Anyway, you just, <laughs> which door goes where? But the point is that there's multiple entrance points. And in any business, there are multiple entrance points. Marketing is one. Networking is one. Sales is one. So if you're doing all of those activities digitally, it makes sense for them to be aligned. <laughs> and so that they lead into the same funnel. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> we were having this conversation about capitalism earlier. And while I identify as a, so a socialist, I believe that companies need to make money. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Companies are in business to make money. They use that money. Some use it responsibly. Some of them don't, right? Like we're not here to make that decision today. But even you as a solopreneur, or I as a solopreneur, or as a, 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 a small business locally, like you want to pay your employees. You want to pay for your inputs, right? Like you need to make money to pay for that stuff. So this is about doing activities in the sales marketing and networking capacities in a digital space that lead to a funnel. Because if they don't lead to a funnel, no one cares how many social media posts you did. It's true. And actually, I, I've been using the term pipeline because instead of it like really just funneling people, it's really ushering people into your world and through uh, on their own capacity and whether wherever they come in, they just whoop, and they're in. Right. Um, and what, what I find is interesting is just this idea that, okay, so our purpose for all three is to bring people in, to open doors and to allow people into our world. Yes. And the differentiation between them, which, which has been very, very severely blurred with the, the progression of the digital wave, right? Um, is based on the action items within each bucket is what you're saying? Well, and like, I would almost say like, forget that these are three buckets, right? These aren't three buckets. That's okay? it. <laughs> and that's, that's the thing, right? Because yeah, sure. We could say that content creation is in the marketing bucket and connection requests are in the sales bucket and an online networking event is in the networking bucket. You could, but for to what purpose, right? Mm -hmm. To accomplish what? Because if I go to a networking event and I show people who I am and I create connections, that's marketing, right? So it's kind of both. If I go to, I went to a gala in person a couple of weeks ago and I ran, mm, the MC had prompted us like, go during the break, sit at another table, talk to different people, right? And so I'm like, uh, yeah, that sounds great. So I did that. And I sat next to the president of the Better Business Bureau. <laughs> like, I didn't know that. And we ended up talking about a whole bunch of marketing stuff, which I didn't plan. Right? But all of a sudden, that's a sales opportunity. Mm -hmm. But not because I approached it with a sales hat on, because I approached it from the perspective of people knowing who I am. Right. Mm -hmm. And also from the perspective of me knowing people, which I think 
in all of these capacities can be something that gets missed, right? Like if we're just marketing and shouting a message out to the audience and we're sales and we're just pitching things to people who don't think need it and we're just networking and we're only caring about ourselves and not the other person, we have none of those opportunities. I mean, we did not open a door. It's like slamming a door in people's faces and being like, do you care about me? No? Okay, bye. Right? Like, what? Isn't it? Isn't it usually, it's, this is funny because you say this and usually people think that shouting about their business through posts, making connections and introductions through D- DMs um, and having sales conversations with people who have stumbled upon their website or filled out a form. People think that this is actually opening the door. Right. But it's really, I mean, I'm, I don't necessarily think that it's slamming the door shut, but it's certainly creating an obstacle for that door to open further. Right. I think of even the top of my basement stairs, the kids often drop their stuff there because they know that the basement has the, the the washing machine, right? So they're like, oh, okay, well, I'm done with this sweater. And it goes there. I try to open the door and damn well won't open because the sweater's in the way. <laughs> That's like what's happening when you start just shouting about you. Conversely, if you start being curious, you might notice that that's getting in the way, take it out. And all of a sudden now you've got this influx. Now you're, now you're having genuine conversation. You're actually able to meet the people, stay curious about the people who are surrounding you without anything fogging your mentality about, Hey, this is a potential sale. No, this is a potential person. (laughs) Well, it's it's not even a potential person. It's a person. Well, men in black might have something to say about that, but we were, we were doing some nineties flashbacks earlier. Or I do love me some men in black. (laughs) I'm just saying like, they may not be, but, but you, you catch the gist. It's just this idea that stop putting barriers in your way by putting arbitrary titles on things. Just go out there, stay curious and meet people. Well, and it's interesting. So I actually had a conversation with a client about this last week because his his assessment of himself was that just bad at marketing, right? And I was like, okay, tell me more, right? And so it, um, I wish I had his exact words in front of me, but he's like, I just want to connect with people, right? Like I want to listen. I want to like be present. I want to spread inspiration. And I was like, okay, so we were specifically talking about con- sending connection requests. And I'm like, so how, like, how does a connection request feel to you right now? Yeah, he explains it. I'm like, so what if your connection request, because this is the type of guy you are, this is not me telling my client how he should be, right? Like, this is him saying, this is how he is, and this is how he likes to serve the world. And so my question back to him was like, well, do you want to, like, could you use a connection request to open the door to inspiring people? He was like, oh, I hadn't thought about it that way. So like now we're not even talking about any of those three words, networking, sales, or marketing, right? Because if those words, if you're listening to this today and the word marketing stresses you out, Mm -hmm. I told him he's not allowed to use the word marketing anymore. (laughs) Because I asked him, I'm like, would you outsource making connections with people? like actual connections. And he was like, well, no. I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> but we talk about outsourcing marketing. Like we're not talking about outsourcing connection, but we are talking about outsourcing connection. Mm-hmm. So in this scenario, right? Not in all scenarios, yeah. but like, I was like, so he was like, oh no. So I'm like, this is about you finding a way where you can do this activity, which actually most people would consider a sales activity, not even marketing mm-hmm. <laughs> at, in a way that feels authentic for you and and matches your way of being because this is something it annoys the crap out of me because it's possible it's possible in every scenario for every person for every company it is possible to do the things the way you would do them there is not one way to send a connection request okay sure there's one list of clicks you make to send a connection request from a technology perspective, but there's no right one way for you to reach out to people to build your network. I have another client who's just like, he all the, the way he talks about it is creating a community. Mm-hmm. I mean, dude, forget about sales, forget about marketing. Let's talk about what you would do to create a community. Cause it's the same thing. Right. And so when we get stuck on these words, 
that keep us in that state of anxiety, we're actually not doing ourselves any favors. I reframe this all the time for stuff. People get stressed out doing sales. And I was like, do you like, you like helping people though, right? And they're like, oh yeah, we love to help people. I'm like, okay, so stop pretending you're selling things and just go out and help people. Mm-hmm. And yes, at some point we can't all help for free all the time, right? Like, but there's people who get excited about paying you money for that type of help, right? So let them pay you the money. Yes. That doesn't mean everybody's going to get that excited about paying you the money for that thing. But like there are people out there. But if you are so afraid of sales that you don't show people how you help, then the likelihood of you being successful in sales is very low. Yeah. So there's like, again, this is why I love this concept of the intersection, because like what even is the intersection of sales and marketing and networking? It's, I don't know, some networking. <laughs> no, it's not oh, I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> I should have drafted this in advance. Those right. three words don't get, come together very easily for me. But the point is it actually doesn't have to be some like weird mashup of those three things. It can be like, I have a client who is, is out to inspire the world. Okay. How are you out to inspire the world on LinkedIn? right? Take away the barrier of what is marketing, take away the barrier of what is sales, take away the barrier of having to network, right? Like all you want to do is inspire people. So go do that, right? Go inspire people. So when I, this is actually just like, you're, you're filling my bucket, Tracy. Because mm. um, I'm just like, oh yes. Because whenever I'm asking people about like, I, I typically will group all of that under marketing. Because I say you're never not marketing and it kind of helps people to kind of uh, hop on board when that's what they hear me saying. Right. And this is a, this is just a a psychology thing with regards to branding and marketing and that's fine and dandy. Um, But it really is just like that overarching, how you're putting yourself out into the world. Mm -hmm. And when I'm asking people about their big vision goal, that's what I mean, right? What is your big vision goal? What, what, what are you trying to do? And then we talk about where are you coming from? Where are your core values? Who are you as a person? And then we create the path, the steps between the two to make sure that you're in alignment all the way through. And some of those steps may include DMing people, creating a a content strategy or creating a networking strategy or whatever that looks like. Those are parts of the steps and the marketing that you're going to need to do along the way in order to achieve that goal. So what you're saying makes sense like and 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 the way i i try to help people to action that is just flowing beautifully together so when we were talking at the beginning and we're talking about our minds kind of going like this we're actually in a lot of synergy which is beautiful well and i think this i remember actually like there's a handful of things i learned in corporate that are like still very helpful to me and one of them is this idea of a river right and a river flows but it also currents right? So like you move between things. And a lot of times we think we have to be very direct, right? And this is relevant in sales, marketing and networking, everybody, that we think we have to be very direct. And that's the most responsible thing I can do. I can tell people that I'm out here to get clients. And are you interested in getting my kind of help? And like, raise your hand if you've received at least one of those on LinkedIn today. (laughs) Today. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) At least one a day. Mm -hmm. My favorite was I got one yesterday that said he works with a lot of digital brand experience coaches and they're seeing great results. And I was like, that is interesting because last I checked, I'm the only one on LinkedIn with that title because I made it up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of a smart ass and asked him well. And he's sure, working with. And it's so funny because they do that too, because a lot of people will approach me and say and and tell me, wow, you seem like a really great coach. And I don't call myself a coach. Yeah. I don't consider myself a coach. So then I'm like, oh, that's nice. I'm glad. Do you need an intro to somebody? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so like the thing it's is funny. that, okay, now like that's a sales tactic, right? It's a sales tactic. And I'm sure there's a sales playbook somewhere where they learn mm-hmm. this tactic, right? Mm-hmm. But like, one, if people are calling you on a, your bullshit a whole bunch, then you should probably stop playing that game. It's not working out for you. But this is the thing, like, and these are the types of clients I work with. Like, they don't want to play that game, right? Like, they've received it enough. They do. They have no interest in playing that game. And what their brain has said is that, well, then I can't use LinkedIn, 
as a right. platform, right? Because this is the game. This is the LinkedIn. It's not the LinkedIn game, folks, or the Facebook game or whatever platform you like to play on. It, it, there isn't one way that people use any platform. So the, this is more about exactly what Shana, you just described, right? Like going back to the basics and being like, who am I? I like to call it a mirror of you, right? So like, who am I in real life? Do I go up to random people on the parking lot at a grocery store? Uh, heck yeah, I do. So I how don't. do I mirror that? <laughs> some people do, some people don't. It's not the right thing to do. Some people do it, some people don't. Yeah. Like, I am the one who will have a conversation with the barista while she's making my coffee. Yes. And then I have to just if she makes it wrong it is what it is because i was distracting her but like i'm that person not everybody is but if i was not gonna be that person online that doesn't make mm -hmm. sense right because mm -hmm. if you're gonna have an interaction with me in person this is what you're going to experience so how do we get as close to that as possible in an online interaction? And there's not just one way to do that, right? Like maybe you love videos. I have, I still have a lot of people and LinkedIn doesn't have this feature anymore, which is dumb. Hopefully they'll bring it back. They'll like profile video. Yep, I love it. <laughs> I have a profile video and everybody's like, I love your profile video. And it's all about, it doesn't say anything. I mean, I think it talks about branding a little bit, but it mostly says like, hey, welcome to my page. I'm a mom and I'm all about like being your authentic self. And I like to drink tea and not coffee. And it's like, just says, some things about me and people are always like oh I love it right it's like I know you I'm like mm -hmm. yes because that was the point of it right? yes. and I was like if I I don't have 30 seconds to tell you what I do I have 30 seconds to create a vibe okay so if I was going to create if I was going to create a vibe in 30 seconds what would I say and it's different than if Shauna was trying to create a vibe in 30 seconds, right? Like there's no, this is why I hate scripts. We're not going to talk about scripts because I will rant about scripts for a very long time. But like this is why I hate a script, right? Because mm -hmm. the way you describe who you are to someone at a gala is different than how you would describe who you are to the other moms on the playground, mm -hmm. right? And that is normal. <laughs> so ipso facto <laughs> that's right like apply this to that this is just the way it is and intersections right intersections exactly exactly and and i think that one of the the overarching lessons here just like for anybody listening is as we as we approach the next phase of our life and business um we don't need to put ourselves into buckets or or boxes or any sort of mold you just need to flow with it and understand that there are some things that you can do that will move you forward and some things that will not. And you need to be very mindful of what feels right to you as you are taking those actions. Um, over but also not to assume, like my client, wrongingly, is that a word? I don't know. It's assume now. that it's, I'll make it a word. Um, he assumed poorly that he's bad at marketing. Right. Like yeah. every time you have a first in-person interaction with a person, people remember you, dude, that is good marketing by definition. Right. So, okay. Maybe you haven't found your way to bring that to life on social media, but that does not mean there isn't a way. And it's mostly probably because you, you've been trying to do other people's ways mm -hmm. right? and it hasn't been successful. And same thing with networking, right? I hear this all the time. I, I just like, I, I'm bad at networking. So for one, folks, networking is a skill. <laughs> you don't get good at it unless you practice it. It's mm -hmm. not like a gift you receive in the mail and then all of a sudden you're good at it. It's something you practice. But there's also every single person has places where they feel comfortable. They have people with whom they feel comfortable. They have conversations in which they feel comfortable. And what people forget is that you have some control of that. <laughs> So you can go. I went to this gala event. I had all the conversations I want to have. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, and it include talking about kids and making a huge joke because most of my table didn't realize there was salad dressing. So everybody was like eating just like raw salad. And now you're like, this is such a good story. And we all have it like in common. <laughs> and it's ridiculous and awesome. But like all of that it's like it, it's available if we can like I think just that's a really go good and look point. for stuff and just to reflect back on what you had said earlier about you are the person who talks to people in the parking lot and right. the person who talks to the barista and 
reflect back. I said no to the parking lot, but right. yes to the barista. This right. is my spaces mm -hmm. and circumstances where it feels right to me. Right. Would I go up to a person in the parking lot just randomly? No. If they had a cute kid, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> And well, and I mean, like, probably. usually it's because I see someone else seems to be struggling with their groceries or like they yeah. can't find a cart or like there's usually a reason. That's important. And this is the thing, right? Like, I'm not just like wandering around looking for random conversations. Yeah. <laughs> like, if there's something that triggers me, then I'll go into a conversation. And then what is that? What is that that triggers you? Right. I have some of my best friends on LinkedIn I connected with because I could feel the energy in their profile photo. Yes. And the reason I connected with them because of that is because I do the same thing in person, right? Mm -hmm. I'm actually, I don't know. I have situations where I feel very introverted. It might sound like a full extrovert right now, but that's not true. In certain situations on LinkedIn live or on a recording with a friend, yes, I have like no inhibitions. I feel super comfortable. In all situations, that's not true. So it's about paying attention to like, oh, like I hate going to other, I host my own online networking event called No Pitch Networking, but I hate going to other online events, right? Like I, they're just not done the way I would do them, right? And so hence why I have my own because then I get to do it the way I would do it. And there's people who like it and there's people who don't, right? But that's the point. This is my way. And there's certain people who vibe with that and there's certain people who don't. So it's not like if you've been to one online networking event and you're like, oh, this felt really bad. Right? Like, OK, great. Like cross that one off your list. Yeah. <laughs> but like what else are you trying? Or is there something you're experiencing in person and online that's actually the same and makes both of them uncomfortable? Maybe it's the wrong people. Maybe it's the wrong conversation. I had this great conversation with my husband the other day in the car. And he was like, put me in a room with people talking about fantasy football and I'll talk to anybody. You and my husband the same. <laughs> and he was like, if you put me in a room with people talking about their feelings, not so much. Uh -huh. And like, to some degree, I'm like, well, I make you talk about your feelings, but maybe it's fine on a one-on-one -on -one level, right? And you just don't mm -hmm. want to be in a room like that. That is his personal brand. And so if he finds himself in too many rooms where people are asking him to talk about his feelings, he's going to think that he's the odd man out. Right. But there's, there's some degree of us putting ourselves in the right room, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I feel comfortable with these people and who says, let me challenge you this folks, intersection number 57, <laughs> <laughs> who says you can't find a client in a room of people talking about fantasy football. Well, I will tell you, I won't find a client in a room talking about fantasy because I, I have no idea. I can't hold the conversation in that room. But this is the point, right? It's like, go to that room because you're comfortable in that room and you can have a conversation because when that happens, what do you do? You show the best version of yourself to people. Or your favorite, or your favorite version of yourself. Yeah, I don't like, yeah. Show your youest version. <laughs> your youest you. you. Come yes. with your youest you. The That's most right. you version of you. <laughs> and because that is like where we speed up the pipeline. Yes. We're thinking about this from a sales perspective, right? I just opened up because this is a room where I feel like it's easy for me to open up. And yeah, who knows? You start talking about people's kids. You start talking about work. Or you, I don't know, right? But you went into a room where you made that possible. Mm -hmm. right? So don't go into a whole bunch of rooms where that feels not possible. Same with marketing, right? Like, Oh my God, all my clients are on Instagram, but I hate Instagram. Just, just, just stop telling yourself that story. <laughs> yeah. Because it's Neither not true. of those stories, truly. Because right. like, number one, all of your clients are not on Instagram. No. I can tell you that for a fact. But number two, you may, like, it, it, uh, it depends on your, your immersion in a platform. Right. Well, because and I also that's think really important too. And your first glance, if you don't like it, you don't like it. That's okay. That's a okay. You can pivot, you can switch, you'll find people elsewhere. But if at first glance you're like, nah, I don't know if it's for me, but you haven't really actually been open minded and given it a chance. Well, and it's I mean, also comes back to that like, how are you using it? Yes. Right. Like, are you using it yes. in this pre programmed way and it doesn't match you? Right. And I'll tell you, I'll be the first to say, I don't like Instagram. <laughs> right. Like, I. I don't know. I feel weird. I feel weird. Well, and you've posted. played there. I have played there. And I have a profile there if anybody wants to find me. You won't True find story. very much content. People <laughs> tag me there when I'm on their podcast. But like, 
I play there. I play on Facebook. I play and I've liked the playground on LinkedIn better. So I go play in that playground, yeah. but it's not because I didn't try it. And it's also not because I thought my clients are only on LinkedIn. No, yeah. this is not true of any platform. There's like 2 billion users on Facebook. <laughs> uh huh. Your clients are there, but it's how do you feel about part? Like I like Facebook for friends, events, and like family photos and things like that. I love it for that. I don't love LinkedIn for that. So I use Facebook for that. I feel like I create the best conversations on LinkedIn because I can play in this interim space between business and human and feel like it matches LinkedIn. But that's my perspective. It's not the right thing, right? That's my perspective. So now, I can get behind mode. posting and doing those things. And I can do the activities because I feel good. Yes. But that is an alignment with me, but you can do the same thing on Instagram. <laughs> and, and, and I, I can't do say, the same thing on Instagram. <laughs> not true. can't. I choose not to. Choose not to. Exactly. And I'm empowered in my do, choice. You get to do it on LinkedIn. So that's where I want to invite you to share that PS de resistance after all of that, because we've just, we've just offloaded on everybody watching and listening today. Um, can of and, worms, folks. Right? That's right. That's right. That's how I do. What, what, is your last piece of amazing wisdom that you would like to leave with our wonderful audience today? Find where you can be yourself and go there. So after all of that, <laughs> after all of that, I can simplify that 20 minute conversation down to like be yourself, find where you can be yourself and go there. Now it sounds simpler than it actually is because there's lots of us that are still influenced by all of this quote unquote advice got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do this. But the practice, my friends, is like, what would you do? What would you do? Experiment with stuff you think you would do and then let it go if it's not something you would do, right? Like you think you want a podcast? Great. Get Restream, record a few episodes, see if you like it. You never even have to release it as a podcast if you don't want to, right? Yeah. So many low to no cost ways to test these things. But People get so caught up in the experts saying, this is the way you have to do it. And it's just not a thing, you guys. It's not a thing. It's the way they did it. And it's not a bad way, but it might not be your way. And so if you try it and it doesn't work for you, that doesn't mean you're wrong or broken or that you need more training or it just might not be the right thing for you. And like, don't give up without giving it a fair chance. I always tell people like, give it 90 days. <laughs> if you give it the old college try for 90 days and it doesn't feel good, let it go, man. I mean, if it feels really bad, let it go after one try. Yes. Right. <laughs> but like. Else is that ish every day. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and, and, But it, some of these things we're uncomfortable with because it's something we've never done before. Right. And so you have to move through that discomfort. Some things you're uncomfortable with because it's not what you would do. And so in order to figure that out, you have to practice the difference, right? Like, okay, I've never done a podcast before and I'm not really sure what to do, but I'm going to like keep doing it because I know why I'm doing it. Right. This is the message I'm trying to get out. This is what I community I want to create. Right? You have a, a good why, but if you're doing it because someone told you you need an email funnel, right? Like just, just yeah. look at that. What is yours for? I'm not saying any of these things are bad, right? Like I know people who build their entire business off of just an email funnel and no social media, mm -hmm. right? And then I'm like, how do you get people on your email funnel? But they have a way, right? Like, cause they figured out their way. That's their way that they enjoy talking to people. So what is your way? What rooms are you comfortable in? And extrapolate that to marketing tactics and sales tactics. And then do that. Do yes. more of that. And if you want to do more of that with Tracy, you know, you can get in touch with her over on LinkedIn. You find got, me on LinkedIn. Uh, if you're, if you're not on Instagram. Now, Although if you go to Instagram, my LinkedIn link is there. So you can there, there, she, you'll, you will always, wherever you find Tracy, you will be redirected to LinkedIn yes. where you will find her for real. Um, yes. It'll be, a, it's a scavenger hunt guys. Um, so with that, Tracy, I want to thank you very much for being on the show because this is always a joy. And to everyone else, I want to encourage you to subscribe, follow, and make sure that you're keeping your eyes open for the next conversation because there is at least one every week.
moving forward and you don't want to miss them because they're freaking awesome. Just as awesome as this one with Tracy. So thanks again, Tracy. We will chat again soon. Thanks, Shana. <laughs>